So welcome back guys. Hope you enjoyed that video of the dual point to multi-point conversion. Um, hopefully it's helpful to those who are trying to do conversion on their non-SI vehicle. Um, hopefully I didn't uh, get too confusing in the uh, uh, tutorial there, but um, at the end of the day, my car fired up, so hopefully you guys get the same result. Um, again, if you guys got any questions, feel free to hit the media in the description below. Um, PMs and DMs, I'm pretty prompt on replies because it goes straight to my phone. But uh, in today's video, we are going to try to button up the car. So I'm going to head to the junkyard, grab the uh, female end of this plug, which is on the which is on the shock tower because this is the original fuel injector wiring for the eg you can already see i tugged the ecu on the inside of the car and it disconnected the plugs right here um lucky for me they're all labeled so i know where they go going to go get some oil coolant uh to drain it all out so i think what i'm going to do also is go to like o'reilly's or something and get like a reman axle for the driver's side because it's about 45 bucks or so you know I, I may be wrong but um definitely a new axle is a plus for the new owner so i want to get the axles in today car back on the floor with the new skunk uh suspension or used because they are not blown opposed to the one that are in the car now this is uh, an exhaust from a dc integra with a brand new cat on it and then i'm going to use the uh Honda um, OEM Honda rear muffler from my brother's RT because he won't be needing that anymore Gotta go get some piping to uh, Get it to go over the lower control arm and then 90 into the box because all the uh, flanges were cut off so Junkyard O'Reilly's Walmart because they have the cheapest shit there. Let's get this day started. Get the battery light on, the oil light on. This car is fucking dying. <laughs> fucking CRX. That's interesting. It's not often you see an RSX or an 8th gen in here. Both of the K's are gone. They got two, three open rows with no cars. Wish I could stick around. So the EG, which is the harness I had and the uh, fuel wires that I used, this is the female end that I need right there. I'll go ahead and snip that off. I also need corner lights for the EF too. OBXR twin loop. Somebody came up. This is a GSR. DB8. You can tell by the label. Look at that manifold. D2 coilovers. There's only three of them, and I don't know what car they are for. Here's the fourth one. <laughs> this is probably the first time that I've ever been to a yard with only one EF, which was the sedan that I threw the rear shock into. But the corner light plugs, I was able to pull it off the older Honda Accord and I got my uh, female end plug, so. <sighs> Car almost, almost didn't start over at O'Reilly's and here at Walmart. I think the Optima battery yellow top, it's like, it's definitely dying. So, need battery, I need a motor, I need so much shit for the CRX. But, I'll give you everything in my coin tray if you help me push my car back. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Fuck 
Get batteries. <laughs> it is dead. I truly appreciate that man. Somebody fucked him up. Fuck. And we are back at the pad. Guys, uh, the battery was, it was, it's done. It's an Optima yellow top and it was, I think six or seven years old. And finally it's, it's not, uh, it's not holding charge anymore. The alternator in the car is brand new. Um, I highly doubt it's the alternator, but the car is dead for sure. Cause it doesn't turn on anymore. So I went to the junkyard got my female end connector for the multi-point um tower plug that we did in the last video um got some light bulb and the socket i need for my corner lights because if you guys remember the um turbo crx charge pipe video um i was diagnosing some wiring issue and i actually left mine on his car so we got some New plug and light bulbs, hopefully they work. Went to uh, O'Reilly's on the way back, picked up the driver's side axle. It's a, it's a reman, but apparently it's still just as expensive with the $5 core, and I don't have an axle for a core. So, paid full price for that. Um, like I said, I guess it's better for the new owner to know that he has a new axle. Sucks on my end because that was 60 something bucks out of my pocket. Went to Walmart, got some antifreeze that you have to add water. A couple more bucks, you get, uh, you know, twice the size. Super Tech 1030, uh, regular conventional, don't judge me. Got the two 90 degree pipe that I am going to need to do the uh, exhaust over the lower control arm since the RT goes under the subframe. But today, hopefully we can button everything up and I am pretty much going to start with the front end and work to the rear shift linkage exhaust and all that goodness so i just realized and i just remembered that the blue wagon this came out of my brother's car and it had an eg uh shocks on it and i remember he pulled it off the white car a long time ago the white eg that used to be in the bush if you guys subscribed to my channel a long time ago you guys will remember that eg in the bush but I now need different forks. God damn it. Somehow in that box, there's some EF forks. I don't know who they belong to, but I am gonna use them. So like, I forgot the RT axles are different. I think they're bigger in the shaft because it's not going in the transmission. And I remember reading somewhere where you can use like DA axles in place of the RT. So that only means that it is a, uh, the bigger shaft so um so the new axle i bought was for the driver's side um now i need a passenger side because that one does not fit huh well i'm definitely going to button everything else up um and leave the axle for last um like i mentioned i'm gonna work from the front to the rear get all the other stuff situated up in the front fluid and all and then i'm gonna work towards the exhaust and the rear suspension so i can at least have all of that out of the way rather than stress off of this shit and lose hours um so yeah stay grinding. so uh, the plugs actually fit it it was the exact same one that uh it was the exact same terminal that came out of the plug originally the the grommet on the plug itself from the one that's connected to the car already was brittle i mean it was like pretty firm and hard where i couldn't shove it into the plug but with the use of the razor blade and a lot of like trimming you can see all the little pieces i pretty much got it all in there uh it's got to plug up that last one be sure to put this back in this retaining clip because this is what keeps the clip um compressed against the uh the pin itself to keep it from coming out but um yeah that should button up that i'm gonna try to turn it on and make sure everything is all good and sound before i move on to the next portion so the car threw a check engine light for a map sensor and uh, I just realized now because I'm using the OBD1 throttle body, there's not that extra um, uh, barb that was coming out of throttle body that originally goes through, that goes to the map sensor. 
um, and the map sensor vacuum uh, routing on the DX is a lot different than the uh, SI um, this one right here in the back goes to nothing while on the CRX SI or a car that's already multipoint this end that goes to nothing is normally on this side and then this vacuum goes to the throttle body as you can see right here plugged off T from the map and then it goes to the throttle body so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this one plugged in the back I'm a T this guy right here to this vacuum source which goes to the back of the intake manifold uh, I'm not using this one because the wire is too short and I want to just keep it right there I might make a block off to make this look as OEM as possible so people are not like why do you have a sensor unplugged but I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this right now kick the car back on and get rid of that check engine light and hopefully we're golden here um, I know it's supposed to be at the throttle body before intake manifold, but in my turbo car, I always ran it in the back of the manifold. Really never had a problem. No more check engine light. All right, now we are done with that. Moving on to shift linkage and exhaust. But first I'm gonna put that shock on just to kind of get it all ready. Hey. So I was taking my sweet ass time cleaning up the air box. It has a new K&M filter in it. Um, it's bolted in place. I'm not gonna put that on yet until I got to clean this still I'm not gonna put this on yet until I do the transmission fluid and I can't do transmission fluid without an axle. So I uh, got the battery tied down Got the car jacked up Jack stand the wheels under there the jacks in the back. I'm gonna go under there both of the shift linkage and uh, Test fit the exhaust and I'm hoping that the, the cat is clocked in the same fashion as the header within well, again i'm hoping that it is the correct length to the header to the header okay you guys still can't see this but look I don't know. I don't know. I can hopefully can try to brighten this up in the editing program. But this Integra exhaust has a shield, and these hangers are actually bolted to it and not um, welded. So all I did was I took off these two uh, 12 mil right here, and I shifted shield. I shifted the shield backwards, and you can see the original spot right there. I moved it over here. And now this hanger lines up. So I got the RT exhaust up. Um, it's on one hanger back there. And the sedan rear is a lot longer. So I have to extend those tips out the bumper here. Not a big deal as of now. My main concern is this right here. The RT actually goes under the subframe. Um, not in my case for the sedan, so I need to somehow 90 this over like that, right? And I bought a second one right there, which is gonna go over the lower control arm like so. Hopefully, something like that. And then, I'm not sure which angle I need to go to the exhaust, but I have a straight that's gonna go way back over here. And I am going to weld this all one piece because I don't have another flange, but well, let's see what we come up with. Time to whip out the flux core. Okay, so 
exhaust is all done. Somebody called the fab police because this flux cord looks like straight herpy. But got it all welded right there over the control arm. And then a little boosty ass hanger 90 into the wagon muffler. And you can see how short <laughs> that is stupid short. Um, I'll probably extend this tomorrow. Some I'll probably just go to um, O'Reilly's or something, grab some uh, what is that one and a quarter pipe and just extend it all the way out to the back bumper. But everything is in place. If you shake it, it's not touching anything. Surprisingly. The Integra mid pipe uh, fits. If I was to use like maybe the Integra box, like the muffler comes out the passenger side, it might even work. But yeah, no. Um, but Integra mid pipe, the cat was fitted obviously for an EF. So the EF cat length to the Integra B pipe definitely works all the way up until the control arm, and then uh, that is definitely a uh, upgrade from the stock piping going to the b-series integra piping and then yeah well gotta clean up this real quick and then i'll start working on removing this blown ass suspension well putting in these skunk twos skunk two sport shocks with i have no idea what springs those are but gotta remove this blown ass shock so When you buy coolant, buy the one that says must add water. Cause say this is 10 bucks and I pay two more dollars, cut this container in half. So for $2, you get twice the size for the price of a 50-50 coolant jug. So now I got two. I use green because Grove Street. So upon bleeding the cooling system, I had a leak on the IAC and not quite sure why that's like that, but I was leaking from right there. Lucky I have my SI OBD0 and take manifold in the backyard and I can just swap one right now. Break clean the inside of this first before throwing it in. No more leakage. If you don't have the bleeding tool, like the Mako or the Kragen or whatever, I'll put a picture right here in the corner of what it looks like. If you're ghetto like me, I put electrical tape on the neck of the funnel to snug into the radiator neck. And then I uh, zip tie the uh, reservoir line so the coolant is not going in here. The heater is on blast right now, full hot, speed four. And I'm letting the engine um, coolant bleed out here when it's done it will stop bubbling right now you can still see it bubbling and uh, another way to tell that the coolant is fully bled out is when this thing gets super hot right now it's still kind of cold uh, temperature is slowly getting there but once this heat is hot in the car and that bubble stops then we're good see now the idle has dropped down a lot because there's coolant in the system These sleeves definitely helped me a lot with the exhaust heat um, reaching up to do the oil filter. It's pretty cold. I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, definitely help uh, you know keep the cold off my skin um, and keeps a lot of the oil and stuff greased up on my sh my arms as well. So, but if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. For those who's been following and sticking around from the uh, engine swap of this car. Up until this video, I appreciate you guys very much. All the new subscribers, thank you for coming on board. I can assure you that there's going to be a ton more great stuff coming. If you guys haven't seen the older videos, but uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.